Good afternoon. <clears throat> My name is Alexander Hagen. I am the CEO of a small, medium-sized tech company in Silicon Valley. I have been a financial journalist, a financial analyst, and a research and development project manager for a large telecommunications company uh, in uh, telecommunications. And today I'm speaking to you about the Republican uh, Meet the Press debate that occurred today and about, <clears throat> if you'll bear with me one moment, um, national security and the economy. So the key question is, what mix of uh, public sector, private sector, uh, uh, military spending, uh, deficit levels is going to maintain U.S. competitiveness in the world and prosperity for its citizens? We are seeking the best way forward. Uh, we may need to let go of our prejudices, disliking or caricaturing people. Uh, whether it's a Democratic friend of yours uh, demonizing Sarah Palin or Michelle Bachman or a Republican uh, disparaging Kucinich, we may have to let go of our prejudices and really look at the facts. And I think the most sobering fact we should look at is, as an example, there's no one uh, uh, source of information that's going to tell us everything we need to know. But I think uh, there is a very useful uh, piece of data here, which is from Price Waterhouse Coopers, the world in 2050. 2050, 38 years from now. So if you have a five-year-old grandchild, that grandchild will be 43. Uh, so it's not as far away as it sounds. If you have a child that's 20, that child will be 58. Uh, so uh, there are two basic sets of economies. They're looking at the G7, which are our current major economies, which are U.S., Japan, Germany, U.K., France, Italy, and Canada. Uh, plus, they're looking at Spain, Australia, and South Korea. And the seven largest emerging economies, which they call the E7, China, India, Brazil, Russia, Indonesia, Mexico, and Turkey. Um, now, this is uh, what we really want to get at, um, is this table right here. So, this table shows that in 2050, the U.S. will have 2.4 times its current um, per capita uh, GDP, uh, I'm sorry, uh, gross domestic product. We will have grown by 2.4 times. Um, and our uh, GDP per capita at at uh, parity purchasing power, meaning that you have the same purchasing power from this country uh, uh, versus uh, another, uh, our score is 1.8, which interestingly is vastly below these uh, emerging economies, India, Indonesia, China, Turkey, Brazil, Mexico, Russia, even South Korea, but that of course is per capita. Um, but what is bizarre is it appears that uh, South Korea might actually have a larger economy than the United States. So this is all very complicated. But what it shows is that our, if we keep going the way we're going, <laughs> there's no way, let me move this um, if you don't mind, there's no way that we're going to be able to maintain being the military superpower of the world. Let's take a look here. Um, so uh, I called this out down in this section here, um, and I, uh, I've played around with sorting the various factors. But how on earth uh, will the U.S. be able to maintain 47% of all the world's military purchasing, which is what we're doing right now, um, if we represent the uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, for the 11th economy. Now, the other question is, are our current military policies uh, making these countries benevolently inclined towards us? India, Indonesia, China, Turkey, Brazil, Mexico, Russia, and so forth. Because basically, uh, the the uh, foreign policy hawks 
uh, must have some idea that a mix of military power and economic power put together is better than drawing down our military spending and rebuilding our economy. That is a question, and I don't claim that I can impose my view on you, but I think we should look at this question and not assume that people who are very concerned about our indebtedness um, as a threat to our way of life, our prosperity, uh, and that we have to really look at where is the money going. So let us take a look now at where is our money going? Where can we find money to free up? Um, so <clears throat> here is our public sector. And all this blue stuff is corrections and defense related. Um, it amounts to uh, about, oh, let's see, uh, 20, uh, all public sector spending uh, other than health care, education, and defense and corrections related and interest on debt, largely from the Iraq and Afghanistan wars, um, uh, is, um, let's see here, we're looking at um, defense related and correctional related debt is at about, uh, 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 and debt related to is, is 38 percent of our entire public sector. And this includes municipal. Um, so I showed you what PricewaterhouseCoopers, I showed you what PricewaterhouseCoopers thinks the world's going to look like. And you can, I'm going to give you these references in the uh, comment section uh, so you can pull them yourself. Um, and so let's look at what's really out of whack here. So um, let's see if I can get it for you. So here's debt as a percentage of GDP. Uh, let's see if I can uh, zoom on this so you can see it better. So the U.S., uh, as you can see, has a uh, green is good, red is bad. Um, and what you're seeing here is that the old economy, so to speak, which is, uh, as Rumsfeld disparagingly called it, old Europe, which unfortunately includes old U.S. in this model and even more messed up Japan, these are horribly indebted countries. Um, and interestingly, some of the countries we've been invading or planning to invade actually have very little debt. Um, not that that's necessarily a strong uh, indicator, but sort of interesting, Libya, Iran, uh, also Syria. Um, so we are encumbered pretty severely by debt. And here is a, a chart of debt. And as you can see, Japan's debt as a percentage of their economy. If you have a, a business um, or you do any work for business and, and finance, you know that it's very important to look at one year free cash flow or even gross sales or whatnot versus total debt. And once you start getting towards um, a year of sales equaling your debt, depending on your margins, it can pretty much put your lights out. Um, so uh, Japan really it looks uh, horrific. Uh, here's, um, uh, here's the United States. Let's see if I've got this right. Yeah, Japan and the U.S. We've had a steady growth and we 